Welcome to the second part of this tutorial on Grunt.js and we're going to be creating some tasks in this tutorial and we're going to do that by downloading some packages and we're then going to turn them into tasks and let's just show you how to run them and mainly we're going to be working with the Grunt file JS which in our previous tutorial we went over how to create so if you missed that part go watch out and you'll be up to date with what we're doing here so let's get started alright so, so inside this Grunt file JS first line we got is our module export and what basically that does is just exporting our code to grunt to run so don't give that too much thought. The next line we got is our configuration in each config file so we're going to pass in some configurations for it to export so down here we notice we have pkg and that's path is going to be referring to package json so what that will allow us to do is it will allow us to access the variables in that JSON file. So that would be, for example, your name, or it'd be the author, or whatever, and then we can then use it when we're creating these files. So, for example, as you will notice in down here, that we're using these variables to give it the name of whatever JS file is concatenated in the end. So we go pkg.name, like it's object oriented, we're accessing the name variable from that file, the package JSON file. So that's how that works, and it just gives you access to these names and so on. So it's just a neat way of doing it. So the next thing we got down here is then all our tasks, and they're basically split up with comma separation as usual with JavaScript. And we kind of go in and defining where it should be getting the files from, so um, where we should be compiling the files to. It could be, for example, if we're using a compiler, so these different packages then come with different options and so on so you can use google each of these packages and then get the basic setup for them so with these we're going to be using the concatenate and we're going to use the octify and so on so that's the main idea here so each of these tasks then we need to register them as you see down here we need to register them the modules so one from a JSON package, so we put the package into the JSON file and we need to sort of load the file uh, package into here. So we do that with the load npn task down in the bottom here, and then at the end, we then register in the different task that we want to be able to access from a command line. So hopefully, that makes sense. So at the moment, we have no packages installed, we install grunt, so that will be in our package JSON file. So in order to install these packages, well we need to know the name of the package or we need to specify the package we want to install and we can then add it to a package JSON file so if you run grunt in here you would notice that all these packages are missing so we specify them in our grunt file JS that we want to register these so you notice in here the only thing we have under dev dependencies is grunt at the moment it's the place where all your packages will be showing up if and that's a big if you save them as a dev package so you can for example save it as a dependency for production and it will be in a different area so it will still be in this package file but you have a different dependency area so you notice that as I said earlier you can install your packages for production however we're going to be installing these packages for development so it will show on the, up on the dev dependency and we do, as we do as we said earlier about the way we're going to be doing this is do minor minor and then save and minus and dev and that will save the package to this so what we're going to see here is that once we install the package it should update its package json file just let that run and it's just going to download the package and we will notice once it's done downloading and installing it if you open a package json here again you see the new package added with the correct version number and as i said earlier this is really where the key is installing the different versions and having a local version of the different projects so you're not going to be using the same version number all over again and it, as you see if you run it in here again you will notice that that package is now not showing up as missing so it's been successfully added to a project all right so that's one way of installing the packages but what if you download the project and say you have the pack and JSON file and you already these packages defined however the different packages have not been included in the project you download well you have to go around it a bit different way and there's it's quite 
nice as you will notice but what you would have to do in order for this to work is that first we're going to need these packages defined in your package JSON file so you already have that if you downloaded the project so let's just define some packages so the missing packages you have here if we go into our package JSON file and we then define them so and I just looked the different versions up that I'm going to be needing for this project so you can just google that whatever you're going to be needing so just add them and you need to do the comma separation as usual with JavaScript here so that's all of them added so how do we install this? well you can go into your command prompt and you can try npm and then install and that will then go in and install everything that you defined in here however let me just point out that we were talking about production earlier that if you have some specific to production if you're going to do npm install production now we only be installing those specific packages defined in your package file under the production section so you notice in here in your project under node modules you have all these new uh, packages defined that is getting downloaded Let's just give it a bit of time it's still working on them so that's basically how you install packages from a project you downloaded just keep in mind that you might only want to install certain packages specific for what you're going to be doing with it so say for example a production example if you're only going to be using the production bit you don't want to be installing all the dev dependencies because there could be hundreds of packages well this might be over the edge but there could be a lot of packages and you'll be sitting in a long time waiting for that to install so with our package installed we can now run grunt again and we do that by just typing grunt and that would run the default command that we specified in our grunt file so at the bottom of that grunt file js you notice there was one called default and then after that it had all the tasks defined that you want to run under that so when I type grunt in here it should run that range of tasks that was defined in our array there so let's just try that you notice I'm gonna get an error because I haven't set up the test unit here for it so we've got some unit testing running here so don't worry about that the main point uh, that's showing here is that it actually is running so you it's executing your task so we've got all the pa package installed and we've got our tasks set up and we've got them registered in here and as you see we all can also register other sort of commands so we can do test for example you can like that and then you can define the different tasks you want to run on the test and we will then execute those when you type grunt test so that's how that works so if you want to create a new one for example you could call it grunt production or something like that you will basically define it in here as another one you just copy that request the task line and you put in the task you want to run in an array and then you do grunt space production once you execute it and you will see the result of that then okay so while that's good it's running we're not really getting anything done as it is at the moment so let's just change these different packages to actually do what we want them to do so for example if we're gonna go in here and and then down here dist this is really the important one your source is what files is gonna take and the dist is where you're gonna have the result ending on so it's gonna go to this destination and it's gonna get the name of it and then it's gonna have the extension of that so and the asterisk of there is basically saying all the files in that folder and all the sub folders and so on so let's create two different files here so we can concatenate these two JSON files so we just make one file here and we just create this very very simple line of code here. so for example imagine this be a partial with the buttons JS so all the logic for the buttons would be in here and we then want to create a folder in here so as you remember we need the source folder if I then put it in here it changes to something else here so we just have two files and we make a banner so we basically have two files now 
and we want to concatenate those two and we then want it to be put out into another folder and what we should see if you have, let's just create a folder here is that this file should be combined once we run this task so we've got the concatenate so we scroll down to the button here and our default here so we want it to just just want to check if there's any errors and then we want to concatenate so we just take those out of the array so we're now running these two tasks under the default command so when you just type grunt this is what's going to be executed so we just do grunt here and it's done no errors if we go into this folder now we should have a file and there we go you would notice it's taking the name as I said from that variable from our package JSON file so that's the general concept of how you're going to be working with these packages so I would strongly recommend you to look up each individual package once you have found what you're going to be needing for your project because it might have a certain options available for you it's not all going to be the same for example a concatenate had the option of added a semicolon in between each concatenation so I would strongly recommend you do that and that's sort of the basic concept of it however it's sort of a bit of a tedious workflow having to go in and execute like this grunt task every single time you change your JS document or your CSS document or assessed whatever so what would be the better way well you can actually get grunt to actually sort of watch each file and every time you made a change it would be registered by grunt and it would execute this task well this sounds very convenient doesn't it because well you basically don't have to go in and click anything you can just type it and you can update your document and you can refresh your browser and there is your new CSS added to the browser so how do we do that well we do that with a module called uh, or package called watch and you notice that we already installed the grunt contribute watch and we already had a task set up for it as well so let's try that out all right so if you jump back into your grunt file at the button here we notice one called watch so what we got specified in it will be your files so that's basically the files you wanted to watch and then you have the tasks and that's the tasks you want to execute so let's just change it's to focus on the JavaScript files so we just take the path up here and copy it down here so now we're going to be watching all these JavaScript files in that document and we're going to be running these tasks every time any of these documents have a change so you might already guess what we're going to do now we're going to run grunt watch to target that one specific one and you should notice grunt will start listening for any changes to these documents so you see now running so if I was to go into my JavaScript files here now, just remove that. We don't want it to add anything between the concatenations. So in here, say I want to change something in here, and then we should see it in the final file once they're concatenated. Just type anything in here. So once I save that, and I then go back to my disk folder here. We now have this folder. You notice it's updated the date. We just say yes to that, and there we have it. So we now have this file changed without having need to click anything in a command line or type anything in my command line to execute this. It just does it automatically. So it's a very convenient way of working with it, and I would strongly recommend you to set it up. So as I said, once you set this up, you can basically just go to your browser and refresh if you say you are working with SAS or less and it will compile it in the background for you and you, you basically just have your normal workflow as you would be working with CSS and HTML together instead of having to work with the preprocessors in between there alright guys so that's everything on Grunt.js for now hopefully it's cleared up some confusion around it and helped you get started on your next project as I said once you set this up you can sort of copy it over so you can create your package JS sample file you don't have to go through the command line to do that and you can then sort of create your grunt file as well so you just copy those into a project or you can also if you're using some continued integration set it up so that every time you're creating a project you could for example create it that way or you could create a batch file to create these files for you or whatever way is the fastest for you to get started in a new project 
but once you sort of set these up the basic structure as the wrapper and so on so you only just need to go into your command line and install that specific package for your project it's really kind of get you going really quickly with your project and as i said try out the watch part of it because as i said these days where you're working with less and SAS processors having to go in and compile it every time you have to see an update is quite inconvenient so if you have run doing that for you in the background it's going to speed up your development time considerably so thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and i shall see you in the next video